Confession heals the soul Lately I've fallen down Stumbling over passings And secrets I've held within Lord, I'm struggling I need you to fix my desire Hi gents, so it turns out that Rihanna's pregnancy is in fact a real pregnancy. Now, all in favor of killing ASAP Rock in the name of Drake? Motion passed. Brother Huey, please add kill ASAP Rock in the official list of demands. Our next motion. Hey everybody, welcome back to Song Distillery. We're back again talking about the Heartwork EP. We are on the track Consistent Love. Uh, yeah. Before we actually get into the questions, this time around we're actually going to take a listen to the song beforehand so that we can all embrace it and love it and jam out and all that good stuff and then get right into the dialogue. Awesome. Know some nights you cry and you wonder why. Why is this happening? I know some nights you doubt and you cannot figure out why are people leaving? God, where are you leading me? You take God and know He will always be there, even when you can't feel Him. He God that loves consistently, consistent love for me. Love me when it gets dark, comfort me through the night. Healer of broken hearts, strengthen me to fight. Guide me through the valley low, consistent God I know. What you've been through And I've been there too This isn't new to me We share some things you see If you listen carefully to me I've walked this road before So take heart and know He will always be there Even when you can't feel Him He can there is a God that loves consistently, consistent love for me. Love me when it gets dark, comfort me through the night. Healer of broken hearts, strengthen me to fight. Guide me through the valley low, consistent God I know. Comfort me through the night Healer of broken hearts Strengthen me to fight Guide me through the valley low Consistent God I know Father, we're grateful for your love that consistently holds us through the darkest nights, through the longest days. When other people are inconsistent and fail us, you stand by faithfully. So we rejoice in your love, God. And we say that it's in your love that we know we can find comfort. Yeah, it's in your love I know. Oh, that's where I go. That's where I can go when I'm weary. Oh, it's the refuge for my soul Oh, your love's my home I reach 
choice because you're consistent. Oh, it's in your love I know. Oh, that's where I grow. That's where I can go when I'm weary. Oh, it's the refuge for my soul. Oh, you lost my home. I rejoice because you're consistent. Beautiful, Bravo, beautiful, Bravo. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> consistent nice. love. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. I mean, I, I always say that these tracks are beautiful, but I mean, I can't really uh, ascribe another word to them, man. Like, <laughs> uh, you guys, the whole, the whole enchilada, the 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 singing, the production, enchilada, the, enchilada. the, instru <laughs> the instruments, everything, the whole enchilada. It's just, <laughs> it's beautiful. Um, enchilada, isn't that like a Spanish food? In Enchilada. It's a, it's, huh? It's an idiom <laughs> in, 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 I don't know, like in my culture, like the whole enchilada, it means like the whole shebang, the, the uh, whole entirety of everything. I don't know. Mm. I don't know. Somebody will figure it out and they'll translate it to something that <laughs> probably means something of the equivalent. Food, food, enchilada. It's, it's the, it's the. Yeah, I think, I think it is a food, but, but in culturally they, they use it to mean the whole, the whole works, everything. The whole works, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, I actually was um thinking today when I was uh, listening to the track earlier. Uh, you start off the track with this sort of, to me, it almost feels like a letter to a friend, like a text message to a friend. Like you're starting this open dialogue with, um, you know, somebody you're close to and you see them struggling. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just curious, what was there any inspiration behind that like was there an event that happened like where you actually were talking to a friend or was this kind of just like a um impromptu sort of writing in the moment thing sean's <laughs> sean's question um so yeah uh what didn't happen so there, there was no incident with a person um mm -hmm. it wasn't a case where like a close friend of mine went through went through something that triggered me writing the song. I actually was going through stuff personally. And it's almost like when David would have been in the Valley of Ziklag and would have had to have encouraged himself. Like, it was like, I'm going to write this to myself, like penning the words to myself, kind of like, you know, I you know some nights you cry and you wonder why, you know, so in, instead of, mm -hmm. instead of me, like just saying, oh, you know, sometimes I cry, etc. It was kind of like me right. kind of, uh, taking the form of somebody outside and kind of speaking to myself mm -hmm. about the stuff but then oh. at the same time the idea was that in me speaking to myself kind of like when David said oh my soul why are these quieted within me um you know kind of taking myself out of myself and writing to myself to encourage myself but then I felt like that dialogue could help other people as well um yeah, and, so, yeah. and so that's why when I go to verse two it kind of switches to you you know because now I'm addressing yeah you know the, the the audience whoever the hero and i'm like you i see this i see what you've been through and i've been there too this isn't new to me um and so yeah so the idea is writing to myself you know kind of encouraging myself um through some stormy times um yes personal stuff triggered it <laughs> uh, uh but it wasn't like someone else's personal struggle it was my own journey um and, and just kind of becoming very aware that your human love is such a fickle thing you know like human beings we are inherently frail and flawed and so what you find is everything that we do is weak you know so even the, the most noble things like love um it's inconsistent because of who we are you know inherently right. we're just so broken that we are not able to to, to give this very noble thing like God can. And so God was kind of just helping me to, to re-avert my eyes from um, being captivated by human affection to like his and just recognizing that, okay, he is the only one that offers consistent love. Um, and so, yeah, that's where it came from. Right. Amen. Man. That that's, the, that's just beautiful. Like, and well, well said too, like the, 
like juxtaposition of everything like from yourself yeah. to the audience to david to like <laughs> all that sarah were you about to say something i'm sorry if i cut you off <laughs> oh that's okay that's okay i was gonna ask him if that's how you came up with the the title of the song that's yeah. how you decided on yeah. the title absolutely just just the thought of i desire consistent love being extremely frustrated with the inconsistencies of human beings and god just kind of inserting himself into that like I'm your only bet for consistent love, bro. So, <laughs> okay, want consistent right. love, then here I am. Yeah. Okay. Now, how hard or easy was this for you to write this song? For you to write? Um, to be very honest with you, I find like the songs on the EP. I don't think any of them were quote unquote hard to write because what I find yeah. is, for me, the composition process, especially when it it is um, putting words to personal experiences, it happens very organically, very easily. It almost writes itself because it's kind of like if I ask you what your name is and what the name of your family members are and your gender, you don't need to think too hard because, come on, no. I know that. that's, that's me, that's my personal oh, thing. So yeah. in the same way, writing songs that are from personal experience is not hard to, to, to frame them because it's just like, yeah, I've, I remember what it felt like. This is what it felt like. I remember what the thoughts were. Here are, here are what the thoughts were kind of thing. So, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. mm -hmm. And it's interesting because you were talking about um, parallels to David and I didn't, mm -hmm. nobody said anything about it, but I was definitely getting that vibe listening to this song earlier and like um yeah just i totally i get it like i i i felt the imagery there already yeah. and i was thinking about um like what because the whole time i'm thinking you know wherever i make my bed whether in yeah. the or down in the dirt below like you're there and yes. like i'm like that's literally what this song is it's like it's just showing you how much like god is truly there no matter your circumstance um, yeah is what other i'm th i'm curious did you intention like again this might be kind of weird and blurred lines because of you know artistry and that's how fair. you write but um was it a active forethought like you were writing to say um I want to use the the psalmist what the psalmist wrote and i want to mm. i want to write it in my own way or was it more organic than that and you kind of uh came from a different a different side of the same coin aspect does that make sense Maybe i totally not. get you i totally get <laughs> okay, you okay. so cool. i think to answer your question the answer would be so no i didn't like deliberately and try to channel or embody the psalmist's technique let me tell you what i think an analogy that would probably sum it up is so we all know what it's like to be kids and you would remember at different times of your childhood despite our varying upbringings um your parents would have said something to you that you'd be like nah that doesn't make any sense but when you get older <laughs> you just kind of get it like oh, yeah you realize that's <laughs> what this person was saying all this time so what it was a very organic process for me in terms of embodying passages like where David would have said, oh, my soul, why thou disquieted in terms of disembodying his consciousness and kind of addressing himself um, or encouraging himself in scripture. Um, mm -hmm. and, and another scripture you can bear in mind is that Hebrews 4.15, where it talks about um, us having a high priest who is able to empathize with our weaknesses because he himself was human and, and, and did went through the things that we did. So in a, right. in a sense, me going into that kind of space wasn't a deliberate thought of oh i'm going to write like the psalmist it was more a matter of right. yo i get what david was experiencing you know you've read these passages all your, all your life um you've skimmed over passages in scripture you've memorized even verses but then when you go through certain spaces experientially there's a kind of ah get it now kind of moment and so if you're writing from that place it naturally kind of takes similar channels yeah so mm -hmm. yeah yeah Okay, nice. And um, I noticed that this song is different from the rest because this one you actually you paused and you you were talking in it, right? Yeah. No, what made you decide to do that? And then you yeah. transitioned to the bridge. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, talk yeah. to us about that. Yeah, Javis. <laughs> Javis. That was Javis. Javis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Javis. Javis. So so I'm trying to remember what took place in the studio that day um but i do remember us going into the bridge and the idea was um oh it's in your love i know that that hook going out that refrain we realized that it would be going on and on and on and on and on for quite some time 
So okay. the idea was, I think I said to Javis, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, I think I'm not said to Javis. I was like, yo, I think I want to say something here. I think I said that to him. I was like, yo, I feel like instead of just repeating the line over and over, is there a way we can have like a, just a, just a pause to talk? It's not something I do commonly um, because yeah. I say a lot with the lyrics. You know what I mean? So I'm already talking to you. I don't need to stop and talk. Again, the lyrics are here. I'm talking <laughs> right. to you already. Um, but I felt the need to kind of just pause in music, especially because it's a musically busy song. There's a lot going on musically. So I was like, I just want to take a second just to like address this thought and then go into the, the bridge, which is also the outro. Um, so I think I asked for it and then James was like, yeah, yeah, go for it, bro. And so yeah, that, that was, that was the symmetry there. Okay. All right. Yeah. So the bridge, how did you, <laughs> how did you, you know, come up with that and say, okay, this is how we, you're, you're always so good with transitioning, you know, <laughs> you, you're right, Sean. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's yeah, very so, true. The transitions yeah, are always you. too clean, too clean. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you, guys. I didn't. I'm trying to remember because, like, honestly, when when you asked me, like, how did you come up with the bridge? Yo, I don't even know how I came up with the bridge. Yo, I I, I think the bridge just came in the writing process <laughs> of the song. You know what I mean? Like, there yeah, there wasn't yeah, a. I felt that. All right, I'm going to approach <laughs> bridge. this bridge. Yeah, I, I I never approach these songs like that. You know what I mean? Especially because, oh, especially because. All the songs on that EP, none of them were written for production. I didn't right. write them planning to share them. I wrote all of those songs, among others, were just for you. very pers- yeah, personal conversations with the Lord. These were songs I was singing to the Lord in my personal devotional time. And I was like, Lord, you know, and he was singing over me some of the lyrics. So like, by the, by the time, if, if you follow the lyrics of the song, so first verse is dealing with the angst and, and the tensions of the soul. And then, you know, you're hearing the take heart um, come into the pre-chorus, going into the chorus. It is kind of refocusing your eyes on what you're asking from the Lord for yourself. So love me when it gets dark, comfort me through the night, healer of broken hearts, strengthen me to fight. Second verse, no, that the attention is shifted from self to like the audience, like you. So outside of me, no, I know I've been through and so forth, but now I'm, I want to address you. I see what yeah. you're going through, you know? So I, I, can, I can relate, similar to how Christ in Hebrews 4.15 said, um, he can relate to what we, what we endure and what we struggle with. Mm-hmm. So I'm taking that position with the audience. Um, and then, you know, same pre-chorus, same chorus. And then so by the time we get to the bridge, it is kind of the resolve of, you know what? Mm. We're going to be okay. It's in your love, I know. Oh, that's where I grow. That's where I can run when I'm when I'm weary. And so, there wasn't a conscious thought of, "Oh, I'm going to build a bridge." It was just it was just a natural <laughs> flow of conversations <laughs> with the Lord and just where what felt right musically. So, mm. yeah. Okay, so being that you have a pre-chorus and you have a chorus, yeah. was that or can you call that the pre-bridge? Probably. <laughs> I, I've never heard that term used. I don't even know. <laughs> Try to invent terms. Oh, sorry. I don't know. Hey, listen. Well, pre, maybe this is, our, maybe this is a genius moment. Pre bridge. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, maybe you can have like a a transition <laughs> section between the like verse into the bridge, and like there is like this like between part between the bridge and the, it's like a mini bridge. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, or <laughs> mini whatever, bridge, pre bridge. I guess we can call it whatever we want to call it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess. No, let's get into the instrumental aspect of things. Right, Sean? You go help yeah. me out here, as usual. Yeah. He's yeah, the expert so, here. Listen, uh, I actually was... I don't believe you. Okay? I'm, I'm going to come out and say it. What do you mean? What do you mean? You you I can't believe that you're this good at writing these horn lines, bro. Come on, y'all hear that? Y'all hear <laughs> well, I didn't write the horns. I didn't oh, write the horns. Oh, no, 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 no. So hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, I'm so happy I'm here. So you know, yeah, I can't do a final word, but I'm happy to. I'm here because. Writing horns, what's that? Oh, I have to, I have to, I have to translate. You that. have right, to, so, please, please. All right, so Sarah, when you hear, when you hear in this song, those kind of stuff. Right. Yes, yes, those yes, are, yes. Those are horns lines. So horn, you, brass, brass instruments like trumpets and that sort of thing. So, oh, okay. So, so you write horns, those. So, okay. yes, yeah, so somebody has to write those. I believe it was between LJ and 
Ah, uh, what's her name? What's her name? What's her name? Lord. Her name is on the tip of my tongue. She remember, I would have shared with you guys some time ago about the oh. people online that we met. Yes. Oh god. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I remember her. She had the same last name as yes. somebody else. Oh, I don't remember her first name though. Trying to from remember. Africa, the African. There's an A. No, she was African American. She she's in the States. There's an A in her name. Anyway, she they would have done the heart. Um, I know LJ wrote some horns, and I know she wrote some horns with her team. So oh, okay. They took the horns parts away. Okay. Um, cool. Because that was actually my first time working with live horns. And so it was a learning experience for me. I, I fell in love with the horns because of this project. Um, and I really can't wait to work with horns again because they're if so they're fun watching, to work with. if y'all watching this, they were clean. Yeah. The horns clean, were really clean. Tight. Like during the during the bridge and like and then the the actually the, actually the rest of the track out because it basically yeah. it's bridge and then kind of goes more on to, but beautiful just like really like tasteful tasteful is the word yeah. I like to use yeah. I have um it's cool because I went when I was at uh, school I studied jazz writing um so well that was like my main thing but i took like one class on it um just as an elective <laughs> because i was like you know i that could be fun it was with my saxophone teacher mm. so we were um you know and he showed me i always was like you know sometimes things are a bit more intuitive to me but then when it came to this i was like writing it down is so much more complicated than i thought it was like Trust. it's hard to get the <laughs> for me at least to get the the like there's so yeah. much syncopation in that alone that it's not even like I can just quickly write it down. It's like, oh, no, I have to think about where the placement of each note is and then, mm. you know, make sure that correlates to what's in my head. But yeah. anyway, kudos. Kudos to the team yeah, they for were amazing. coming through. Yeah, kudos. Kudos. Now, Victor, um, we have more instrumentals in this song. Yeah, so could you tell us about those? Just list them out for us. The who played them? The persons who played the instruments in this song? Yeah. All right, so I know LJ would have definitely played, I believe, keyboards. I know, so let me tell you, the mixing and mastering team, Jeff Clark would have done the mixing, mastering, and design. Javis would have done primary editing. And then, of course, you'd have had LJ with the pianos. Um, BGVs, Alicia Taylor, Carly Sharschmidt again, amazing, amazing people. Um, mm -hmm. Drums, Joel Grant played live drums on this. Uh, percussions, yeah. percussions, Mark Anthony Reed, bass, Chadwick Morgan, guitars, Christopher Campbell. Um, yeah, so LJ actually didn't play keys on this. It was Javis that played keys on this. And oh, Javis. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Javis, Javis went in. Javis plays phenomenal keys. Though. You guys, Javis just, he just <laughs> he's, a he's one of those maestros man. who. You have to you have to get him out to do stuff like he'll tell you foolish. He's like, oh no no no, you know, not a big keyboard. It's all foolishness. So, so how did you get him on to, to play? He was producing. He was producing the albums. I mean, it just beg him. It is like Jarvis. Yeah, it is beg and you know, out to the goodness of his heart. You know, he he always. That's one thing about Jarvis. Like, Jarvis, if, if there is a need, yo, and he's able to like meet the need, but he but he because I think because his vision similar to me, like when when he visions up here. One of, one of the things that comes with that is sometimes hand in hand with that is kind of like an imposter syndrome where you feel like, I can see, it, but I can't do it. I can't make it happen. I can see, it, but I can't make it happen. So like when I create, most of the times I hear parts that I can't play. So I'll be like, yo, I need somebody to play the keys on this. Um, mm -hmm. And so Javis will do that. So you hear the part, I'm like, I know what needs to go there anymore. Let me get in LG on it to come and nice it up. When in fact, Javis oftentimes can, can do, do it. You know what I'm saying? But he went in on this one. So I'm grateful. I'm grateful to God that he did. And yeah. Okay, give it up for, for <laughs> Davis. Brother Davis. <laughs> Let's go, Davis. Brother Davis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, um, I, I'm not sure, but I have to ask this, being that I'm not sure. Did you, I heard like you're, you were singing support vocals. What's the thing that you said, Davis, um, showed you how to do the Oh, in terms of in terms of um singing my own bgbs that the, like the yeah 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 i heard that in the uh, beginning your ears are clean not in the beginning but <laughs> let me tell you let me tell you what you heard what i think you heard there's one part in there where i sang a harmony line for myself yes 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 that's what that's i'm what talking you heard. about yeah you, you, you're sharp because that, that's not even like prominent it's very very oh, yeah we're sharp <laughs> good job good job yeah, oh, yeah. Good, good. one line i harmonize myself i don't and, like and it i feel like i mess it up but you know no but, no no i like it whose right. idea was it davis 
Uh, yes, the six, do you remember? People of God. I don't yeah. remember. I honestly don't remember whose idea that was. Honestly, I don't remember. It might have been James, it might have been mine. Because the thing is, like, when, when we're in the studio and like, we're creating, half yeah, of the time, yeah. James will be like, Brother Brown, try this. Or, you know, I'll be like, yo, yo, I want to try this here. You know what I mean? So, that, that harmony line, I don't remember who, whose idea that was. Okay. If it was then... mine, I'll, I'll slap myself. If it was Javis, then it was brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, then the other vocal support vocalists yes. Carly are... Carly Sharsmith and Alicia Taylor again. So three. Yeah. Well, two of them. So it's um Carl Carly. and Alicia. Because mm-hmm. 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 okay. Carl, Carl Sharsmith is also known as Lee. I think Lee's his middle name. Oh, oh, mm-hmm. oh. So we'll call him Carl Lee Sharsmith. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Oh. I thought I was Carly. Carl is yeah. Carl is really, really good. Alicia is. Alicia, if you know these guys, if you listen, and I mean, quick shout out to them. I, these are I know Alicia. who have their own work out. Sarah knows Alicia. Sean, plug, trust me. I'm going to send you the link to Alicia. <laughs> please. When you listen yeah. to Alicia, when you listen to Alicia, yeah. you're going to be like, yo, get her work out of my collection, please. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. Hard Alicia really Taylor good. is one of my favorite. Yo, I don't think she understands. I tell her this all the time. I'll message Ali and be like, Ali. I'm honored to be able to just message you and get a response from your phone. Like, like no jokes. When I listen to her music, it's like you'd have Layla Hathaway's number in your phone. Like, you can be like, hey, Layla. You know what I'm saying? Like, Alicia Taylor is phenomenal. Carl, phenomenal. And these guys are just so humble and so chill because it's crazy. Doing this EP was in- incredibly humbling for me because I would have never in my wildest dreams imagined that I would have been able to, like, sing with people like Ali and Carl. Like, as in the same space, you know what I mean? Like, as equal, right. because I don't see myself on their level at all. Still don't, you know what I mean? But they were so humble and so chill. Like, they empower you. They make you feel like, yo, you know, we can work with you. You're cool. We like your music, that kind of vibe. So that was an amazing experience as well. Just being able to, to have a rapport with these phenomenal singers, yo, crazy. Mm. Right. I just added her music into my library. Trust. So. Dear God EP, <laughs> just listen to that EP with your headphones, please. Javis also oh, produced yeah. that, so you you hear some more say, of his great work. Yeah. Say less. Javis, <laughs> he, he does a lot. Javis he does, does a lot. lot. He, he does, does a lot. lot for you. No, what were um your rehearsal sessions like? Rehearsals, oh lord. Um, so rehearsals were very fun, very exhausting. Um. <laughs> because what we did was coming out of Sarah would have been at Muse. So you don't remember from Muse, Sarah. We would have done rehearsals for Muse and the same rehearsals would have for the most part covered what we the material that we did for the for the EP. Yeah. Um, so I mean it, it was tough because even though it was really fun to work on this project, it was very demanding at the time I was working full time. And so, you know, having to leave work. To, to, to shuttle people to studio to you know it, w- it was very hectic but it was absolutely worth it and so like there is a way in which even though you might have been tired from work and had certain anxieties when you're in the creative space with these guys and the music comes together it's like you get lifted you know you totally forget you know everything because for me live music is everything so being in this space and hearing all the elements collide in the same room and, it, and it's, it's going well and like their ideas being thrown across the room um it was a lot of fun i mean there's a lot of playful banter when, when i don't know about like no but i remember like back then because this was a few years ago um people like joel and lj and javis and others you know there's a lot of playful banter so it was a very chill group of people so you know from time to time people throwing jokes across the room and then you know all kind of stuff we laugh at when mistakes were made and all that kind of stuff but it was very fun, demanding but fun. And I mean, I'm just grateful that it all came together. Right. And and how long for each song, you know? So we have seven, six songs. Yeah, six songs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the so... rehearsal, like, how long did we rehearse? Yeah, how long? Songs? Each song. You know, it varied. It varied because you have a song like Take um, Trust You More. Trust You More is just piano and vocals. Yeah. So you found that we didn't, we didn't rehearse for Trust You More. What? Hmm. Because, You're joking. Um, that, that was one take. LJ, because LJ, no, because what happened is LJ wrote the piano parts and the pads and, and, and all that all that niceness that you hear. LJ played all that. Um, so when he met with Javis and I I so I 
did my little pong pong on the piano, sent them my sketch of the song. Like, yo, this is what <laughs> this is this is what I'm hearing. This is how the song sounds. Um, and then LJ took that the same chord, the same chords, and just kind of added his nice flourish and professionalism to it. Met with Javis, recorded the keys and the strings, and then I would have gone into the studio with Oshane and would just sang on that. So it, there was no that, there was no like LJ and us meeting to rehearse with Oshane. Nah, we just we just went. To, we we got the track a few uh, probably a few days before going to the studio, listened to it on our own, rehearsed on our own. Then we went to the studio. So when we met when we met in studio, that was the first time. O'Shane and I actually were in the same space, aside from the hard work EP fundraiser, where it was just on the night again. So it's just two occasions. We never rehearsed. We just, we just did it. Oh my um, gosh. Well, I'm excited like, to hear more for the next um or next episode. We'll have O'Shane Mays on and we'll talk about yes, more about that. Yes, um, yes. Yeah. Sean, Great, Sean you were saying something. <laughs> That's um, somebody gonna... else you need to plug into Sean. O'Shane Mays. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's E bro. Bro, what's his name? Shane Mays. Mays. O S H A N E space. Last name is M A I S. Oh, M-A-I-S. And his EP is Overcome. Overcome EP. Yeah. Let's incredibly go. incredible oh, stuff. How do you spell his last? I got last name on. is M A I S. A S. M A I S. Is he on Apple Music? He is, and he's on Spotify as well, I believe. Also on YouTube. All right, I can send you the Spotify link after the after the Zoom. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Sorry, I don't want to take yeah. up too much time. Anyway, that's all right. That's I'm right. sitting here like looking at my no, Apple Music thing, and I'm it's like, worth <laughs> the time, trust. <laughs> but uh, no, my um, you know, that's the cool thing about musicians. Um, I think because music is kind of a language. When yep. um, you're in that communal space together. It's not like you kind of, I mean, sometimes you do have to re- rehearse things and get things ironed out and all that. But yeah. when you're with somebody and you're kind of vibing um, and it just flows, it's like yeah. you're, you know, like, you know, yeah, you can just come in and boop, 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 or whatever. Like, that's the case for me sometimes when I'm playing, like, uh, when I go play with, like, the swing band I, I play with, like, we're in the same space. We come to rehearsal and nine times out of 10, we play every single song one time through and it sounds phenomenal. And you're like, that was good. All right, next song. Or you, you know what I mean? Like, I just think that speaks to how God wired musicians and music to work mm-hmm. that it's not necessarily this like arbitrary, not arbitrary, this uh, laborious process that you have to go through and, and uh, tinker with so much as much as it is kind of just feeling and expressing um which is which is difficult sometimes you know depending who you are what you yeah. do yeah <laughs> yeah i mean it's 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 a balance i guess but um and i think it yeah. depends on the genre and the style as well because that, that's true and and it depends on so many variables because i feel like for me going into my ep we so songs like wanda took rehearsal wanda wanda mm-hmm. took wanda took rehearsal wanda took all yeah. the rehearsal um i love wanda hum- that's bad. Humbly, humbly enough <laughs> Yeah, and it was it had to because there's right, no right. you can't just throw people in the wonder fam. Like it, it <laughs> they will wonder like, if yeah, you, you, you you wander <laughs> off, you know. What I'm <laughs> so, uh, but uh, but but the idea is these guys again. I'm blessed because the, I had an honor to to work with some phenomenal musicians who individually are just so good, um, mm. and and so connected to the Lord that when they touch a track they are not only playing what they're skilled and professional at playing, but they're also playing, I feel, what the Lord would have them play. And so it, we mm. meet there. We, it's, like, it's like we're in different spaces and we know, we know where we need to meet. So we just all journey there. We might take different avenues, but rehearsal is more or less taking the different routes that we need to take to meet at the central location of, mm. all right, yeah, this is where we need to be. Um, but then I've been talking to some classical musicians recently, and when they describe rehearsals for them, fam, it's a lot mm. of work so meticulous yeah. it's very rehearsed it's about being flawless not getting anything wrong whereas jazz has a lot of improv jazz right. has so i mm. can't count the number of times when we're rehearsing and like somebody would make a mistake that just was a vibe all right the intro for one though when we we'll get there let me not talk about it no when we'll get there. <laughs> spoilers <laughs> spoilers <laughs> we're, we can't say all that quite yet but no i feel you because i've also i i have experience in Trust. the um the classical side of music and then the jazz mm-hmm. side there's it, even the vibe when you come in it's a whole different thing like different man. every time like the, i have had band directors who did both the concert band and then 
the jazz band mm-hmm. and then concert band he's like you know up on the podium with the baton he's he's in there he's you know <laughs> he's conducting everybody giving cues and everything mm-hmm. jazz mm-hmm. band he's like he takes his tie off he kicks back yes he kicks back, Kick back, he's like, like all right guys here we go one good. right two uh, uh, uh. and then we just play and like he's not right. even he's not conducting we're all just playing on our own uh time and it's just like it is a whole different vibe and i think that's um that's also important like you said to the genre of whatever mm-hmm. you're uh, reproducing because um that genre it 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 comes from that like that that the the vibe of whoever is leading it or exactly. whatever the general vibe is for the group or the individual mm-hmm. who's doing it, it that's just how, that's what it looks like like Classical music is very, like you said, meticulous and very exact. Uh, yes, so exact. Of course, it. it's going to sound like that too. Yeah. So yeah, cool, cool connections though. Cool connections. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 But yeah, I think that's. I didn't really have much, um, much else to say about this. The again, the the horn writing was the thing that took me away. Um, the horns. You like the horns? <laughs> yeah, the horns. The horns. Right. <laughs> shout the out! Horns shout out to the team. Yeah. Shout out to the horns team. I'm going to give them. I'm actually going to reach out to them because I've been reaching out to each of the persons who assisted on this EP individually and just been like, yo, thank you. So, like, this yeah. week I messaged Chris Campbell who played guitar on this and he was like, yo, bro, bless up. Because I mean, it's been such a while since we did recordings until actual release. So, like, I've been reaching out to people one by one, like, hey, it's finally out. Check it out. You know, really glad that you are a part of this project and stuff. And it's just been amazing hearing the feedback from each of these people, just, you know phenomenal in their own right so i'd encourage anybody watching this if you need good musicians every single person i've mentioned as a part of this team some of them are professional musicians open for work so if you want like good bassists or keyboardists there's always javis there's always lj guitarist chris <laughs> campbell bindi benjamin um drums joel grant perks mark reed um i'm going to try and find the name of the horns people again and put them in the description so that persons can check them out because I'm sure they're still doing commission work. So, yeah. Facts. Appreciate you got us with a discount code, Vic? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing. <laughs> no, pay your artists. Pay your artists. Pay, your so ar- pay creatives. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> so, I think this has been um, an excellent episode to capture mm-hmm. um, our thoughts on consistent love. And uh, if you're struggling with that idea of God being consistent, mm-hmm. um, you know that that can be challenging at, at for a number of reasons um but just know that god is he is always there he has been there since the dawn of time and will even be there at the end of time and past that Absolutely. so he he's he is all, literally always there you cannot be out of sight of him you cannot be yeah it's just like it's literally impossible i'm not trying to sound spiritual yeah. and just say things but literally he's he, consistent he's always consistent his existence is consistent yeah, yeah. Um, but and praise God for that, and that He actually sees us as you know His own, um, and sent Himself into creation to die for us, and just right. that the idea of consistent love and that is yeah. my mind. Um, but yes, thank you guys again for tuning in and joining us. Um, please come back next week as we will be um, having Shane join us, and we're going to be going on to a Shane. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, guys. Look forward to seeing you in the next episode of Sound of Spirit. Yeah. Bye. All right. Peace. I'll return.